voted the best podcast of all time. I had a laugh riot. Smartless brings all the laughs when three friends, Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett, get together and just chop it up and spit it out. It's Smartless, and it's... Wait, am I not doing an ad for the... No? It's just a... It's a cold open. Okay. <clears throat> You're listening to Smartless. Smart. Sean, you seem kind of distracted this morning. Have you noticed? Well, I, <laughs> have I noticed? Yeah, no, he's all pissed off. He had to reboot. Yeah, I had to reboot my computer. I hate when that happens. I don't like being. Yeah, I don't like being late. I don't like being the guy. That's the trouble. I don't. Like, you don't like you being know. third. Will was third today. No, yeah. I was. That's not true. Yep. Technically second. I was third. Practically second, but technically third because Sean was here earlier. You know what? You know what? I thought that I had more time, and I went and I and I actually I went to the same guy that Sean did. Uh, who helped him with his carpal tunnel, uh, yep. Tarek, and he... So I was going. I was standing on Don't a rack... Don't drop Tarek's name in hopes of getting a break on your medical bill from him, <laughs> okay? That was pathetic. Jason, have you ever gone to him? Give him his, let's have the last name, too. Go have ahead. You, Jason, have you been to him? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Oh, you he's have incredible. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? So why don't you Well, yeah, I had, I had a bad back at some point. Tarek Adra. Still do, but... Tarek Adra. He helped to lean. <laughs> um, yeah. And okay, so he, he's great, and here comes your, he's your great. discount. So I was standing yep. on a, the reason I was late, I was standing on a racquetball, because I, as you know, I have a bad, I had to bail out. Um, Toe? From my hamstring yeah. last week, I had to bail out of golf. Remember, you and I were yeah, playing yeah. with Charlie and Rob, and, and it, it got so bad, and he said that it, there was like basically like buildup on my hamstring around my sciatic, my sciatic nerve. Fuck, man, I, could, I couldn't even sit down. Is it better now? Yeah, so how's it going? How's it Much doing? Much better. He's helped it out a lot, Yeah, a lot, so what do you got to do now to maintain it? He made you stand on a racquetball that fixed it. <laughs> yeah, it was that was part of it. <laughs> no, it was you know my posture is terrible. He, you know, pillow under your knees when you sleep, um, how you sit, all this kind of stuff. Anything and about eating cereal for dinner? He said he said <laughs> double down. Oh, he did he? Said, he yeah. said double down on that, and instead of milk, ice cream, like a real soft, <laughs> yeah. soft, got soft it. serve I ice cream and cereal. Doctor. Sean just got a boner. <laughs> 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 Sean, can I ask you a question? So yeah. earlier, earlier this morning, before I record here, just just half hour ago, I'm on a business call, kind of, right? Because yeah. oh, it's a work, it's a work day. With a business yeah, man. yeah, yeah. business call, and so I couldn't take the incoming phone call from Mr. Arnett. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just let it let it go to voicemail. Okay. Hang up the business call. Check my voicemail. There's no message. Yeah. Just a record you... that he's called. Is that what he does with you? Like some <laughs> no, that's that just what... won't leave a message, you know, because like he's trying to hide the fact that he 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 tried to call and Wait, then I didn't pick you... up and so he's like too embarrassed to leave a message. No, because... but do you leave a message? I never leave a of message. Of course either. I leave a message. Well, or, hey, Grant... or at least I'll text afterwards and say, Hey, tried you. Yeah, hey. well, I'll do that sometimes, but 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 the call okay, is the message. Listen, no, it's not enough that there's just a recent call from you. That that doesn't qualify. You got to leave me a message if you want to call back. Oh, Honestly, no offense to Chris Berman at ESPN, but I think your new nick nickname might be Boomer. So listen, I, Boomer, <laughs> here's the deal. I will say this: what we do now is we don't leave messages because there's a record that I called, and so you can decide that's whether your or message. Not. That's the so message. that's, that's official, the message. or were you just yeah. trying to hide the fact that you're stalking me like some kind of wounded wounded? <laughs> Wounded ex boyfriend. Of hey, mine. by the way, do you think I wanted to talk to you? I had to ask you something. <laughs> well, is it? Let's look have at it this now. attitude. Do you think I want to deal with this? Right. Do you well, think I want to text it? It's but now, imagine but a listen, smile. But oh, because Jason, it's easier. <clears> to Jason's <throat> credit, yeah. Right. Jace, to your credit, yeah. I will always text you. Hey, do you got a second? Or you? Hey, I right. want to chat exactly. with you. Exactly. And That's you call what me folks right do away nowadays. Will you call? You yeah. call me almost it's instantly. Just well, I was just trying. You know what? You, you, you know what? I was just trying to get. Just I, I was just trying to make call it easy me. and streamline it. And I was trying to cold call you. Yeah, because yeah. we have a relationship that was established on calling years ago. When did we decide that we were going to text first? I didn't get that text. <laughs> 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 now, that, now that I got you all warmed up and ready for the first round, damn, let's go out there and meet damn, our fighter. Fucking who we got, up. Arnett? By the way, by the to, way, our oh. buddy Bradley got seven Oscar nominations. He for sure my as fuck did. Wait, he did. He, did? he yeah. should have got director. God he damn it! Got director. That's the uh, yeah. best directed film of I the agree. last yes. decade. I, I, I totally agree. agree too. I, I mean, it's fucking it's Christ, unbelievable. Blown away, listener. There are there is no better film this year than Maestro. Full stop. 
Yeah. Full stop. If you to to do what he did with that film is An so incredible, it's so different. Nobody's doing anything. Yeah, like that. Um, when I Nobody. first saw it, I was blown away. Yep, it's it's a stunning piece of work, and um, I I hope he takes solace in the fact that the Academy will probably look at this and Star is Born as okay. He did it twice, really, really well. So this next one. We're gonna we're gonna give them we're gonna give them at least a nomination if not the statue. It'd be great if yeah. they did it for the next one. <laughs> so, oh yeah, so, exactly, Willie. So that would be great. That would oh be yeah, nice. uh -huh. that Willie's would be great. Got, Willie's got one coming um, up with Bradley. So speaking of the Academy Awards, <laughs> our fella seems to uh, got himself an Academy Award nomination oh. today. Yeah, not today, but but he has had Academy. He's he's been. A, I looked at his. He's one of those guys. He's got his own award nomination page on Wikipedia because there's so many that it, they can't even oh, fit it in his God. regular no, page. I'm getting nervous. Same goes with his with his uh, filmography. It's got its own fucking page, which most of the times it would bum you out. But with this guy, it's okay because he's one of the good dudes, really? and he. He has done stuff. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna remember a lot of this stuff. Mm. Johnny Betts from Private Eye, Taylor Rolader from uh, Twenty One Jump Street. You might know him as uh, Glenn from Finish Line. Um, um, you might know him as no. uh, Jack Passion from Winneka Road. Probably, oh, probably not. But you might know him more as comes. Gurney Halleck from Dune, or Thanos from Avengers Endgame, or, or. Dan White, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award for 2008's Milk. Guys, it's the unbelievably talented, the explosion that is my favorite JB, Josh Brolin. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Josh. I was just talking Dude, about you when this you morning. You started, when you started that resume, I go, what the fuck did... <laughs> The stuff you tried to bury. What is he doing? Yeah, yeah. dude, it's all it. there. Sorry. All the things that you've never seen and don't remember. Yeah. Welcome our guest. No, I mean, oh, if he just gosh. said Goonies, I would have guessed it too. Well, seconds. fuck, I didn't want to say Goonies because I was yeah. I was trying to go old first, and so if I said Goonies, good. fucking Sean would have gone. Does, uh, Josh, does Goonies follow you around like Teen Wolf Two follows me around? Yeah, but uh, how proud of Teen right? Wolf for you? It's like, honestly, th but no, like, but thank are God, you? Like there was those, a point. There was a point with Goonies where it was like, please, God, give me another movie, any movie that anybody will see. But Goonies was a great film. Teen Wolf 2 had its challenges. Uh, it wasn't for trying. <laughs> but thank God it, it has turned into just kitsch in our, in our, in our, in our resume, right? Yeah. But it's uh, not just it's not just Teen Wolf two. It's Teen Wolf also. I just want to make the, yeah T right? double yeah. O. Okay, this is not a sequel. Right? <laughs> Teen Wolf. I, I wouldn't dare. I know. Do Josh. you get the? Are they going to do another one? Do you? Get yeah, that? Teen Wolf three and three D. We're we're it's in deep development <laughs> right 3D. now. Dude, um, if, who's if you, better than Josh Brolin? I Look know. at this. I, I, mean, I am so it's psyched so to cool. settle in with JB. I am so psyched you're here, dude. So nice to meet you. Uh, you let's so. start with what well, you guys met on the set of what was that? Uh, what was a well? We met before a little bit, but we both. We I didn't. Did. I didn't want to bring up the Razzie nominated uh, Jonah Hex. Um, Why not? <laughs> did it get a? Did you know get what? A Why don't you tell the story if you're willing to tell the story? Tell the story that you've told me when you were over at my house one day. You told me that you were walking by my trailer, and what did you see? Do you remember this? <laughs> it was the end of a long day. <laughs> we were. We were shooting this scene where we came into, we were on horseback. Do you remember that, Josh, in that park? And they set yep. up that old, the old town. Yep. And uh, John Gallagher and I came in leading. I, I did not know how to ride a horse. They huh. taught me. Shocker. Rode yeah, into shocker. town. <laughs> anyway, so it was like a dusty day. We'd been on horseback all day, and I walked by. And Josh had this incredible makeup for uh, Jonah Hex that took hours to put on. He could barely move. He could speak out of one side of his mouth. Uh -huh. The other one had this prosthetic on that took forever. And it had a hole in the prosthetic, so I couldn't... And a hole in the prosthetic. Yeah. So I walked by his trailer, yeah. and it's like 6 p.m. We've been shooting 12 hours. It's hot as fuck in New Orleans, like 1,000 degrees. Yeah. And Josh is <laughs> sitting on the steps of his trailer with a cigarette sticking out of the hole of his, of his press. And I had to put a finger over the hole in order to get <laughs> be able to inhale the cigarette. And I had, what else did I have? And he was holding a bottle of whiskey. Maker's Mark. He was ho holding a bottle of Maker's Mark in his fucking hand drinking. At 11 o'clock in the morning. It sounded like he had a triple banger too or a double banger. a little banger. later than that, but it was still... and I and I And the fact that I blame Jonah Hex on anybody else is a fucking joke <laughs> other than me. I got to see 
see that movie, man. No, you have to. I know, I it looked handsome. It. The trailer looked great. It did look like a cowboy. I will tell you that much. I was like, this motherfucker came to fucking play. Uh, can, <laughs> can I tell you a quick story about that, actually? Yeah, um, so we went to the premiere, and we're looking, and the studio kind of took over that movie, and they made it even worse than it already was. And it wasn't oh. that bad. It really wasn't that bad. But mm -hmm. we left early, as one does at their own premiere, Sure. And there was a guy in a wheelchair that left just before me that didn't see that I left behind him when my wife and I left the door. And he was he thought he was by himself and he was wheeling himself out. And he said, 86 minutes of a waste of fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's really funny. The worst review uh, I've ever gotten. I'd rather lose the other leg than see that shit. Yeah, exactly. Again. Exactly. It's really funny. Sorry. To um, well, I don't want to. No, yeah, go ahead. Chai. I don't want to rain on your parade, but just let me know if it's now or 40 minutes I can talk about Dune because I have 800,000 questions. Okay, you can you can talk about Dune anytime you want. Uh, okay. you, you can start now if you want. I was going to start a little further back well, than his most recent I'll, project I'll, I'll that he's working you. on. Uh, Josh, so I wanted to talk, man. Uh, it's so great to have you. You're one of the all-time great dudes, and I and I really mean that. Just outside of e even uh, the shit that we do, you're a great dude. And y you you started obviously. You know, you, you your dad was in the business, your mom was in the business, and so you started with that. And yet, you kind of took you a minute. You didn't start. You weren't like a child actor in the sense that, like, when you were first young, you weren't really doing it. Am I right about that? You were kind of outside of L.A., and then you kind of came back to it? Is that sort yeah, of Yeah, I true? wasn't. I wasn't. I was born in L.A. I was born in Santa Monica, which goes back five generations, I believe. Wow. St. John's. Big, big St. John's. Uh -huh. wow. where, my, where my father was born and my grandfather was wow. born. Holy shit. Wow. Um, and my kid, my kid. Um, two of my kids were born in St. John's. Wow. So, no, I was raised, I, we left uh, the valley. I believe it was Chatsworth um, when I was five and we went to Paso Robles. My mom was in the business as an assistant casting director, but that was it. Oh, Primarily, man. she was, she ran a wildlife way station and took wild animals away from people who had illegally taken them out of the wild and had wow. them jailed. Wow. <laughs> my mother was a five foot three Texan blonde tornado. I smell a real compelling one hour episodic. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And by the way, we just wrote a book that's going to be out in November 19th that it, I didn't really know what the book was. And it's kind of an unconventional memoir, but it's very mother heavy. Fucking and, A. Uh, wait, wait, and you what's wrote? the name of it? Really Plug it. It's not, I can't plug it okay. because I'm not allowed to, but right. yeah, um, but it is coming out in, in November, HarperCollins. Um, but yeah, man, so my dad was an actor. He stayed in LA most of the time. He went back and forth and drove the four hours to Paso Robles. So I had no real, I mean, I think I went on his sets. I think I went on Marcus Welby once. And I think wow. I went on Amityville Horror once. And mm. I was up on the catwalk at 11 wow. years old oh, yeah. where he walked in. And I didn't know. I didn't know the process. We never talked about it. So, Tracy, the catwalk is the is the, is the the permanent uh, walkways way up at the top of the soundstage, usually like 30 feet way up, up above at the, the top. So I'm looking down and I'm watching my dad. You hear action, which I don't even know what that is. And he comes in through the door with an axe. <laughs> and goes to another That's door crazy. where somebody's doing off camera to help him out, but I don't know that. No, ah, no, and he's axing the door, and I'm like, <laughs> oh and it reminded God. me of this story that I heard once of Laura Dern saying the first time she ever saw her dad on film was his head rolling down a flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. But I remember that there was no, there was never anything. I don't have that story of like, oh my God, when I was four, I was doing little plays I made up in my head in yeah, front of yeah, my yeah. family. And they you and I just knew at five, this is, yeah, wait, it was <laughs> none of that. So I had no interest in the, in the acting thing. And then ultimately just to jump forward, I took, I was kind of flunking out of school once we moved to Santa Barbara and I did a an improv class, and I didn't even know what it was. It was like you can do underwater basket weaving or improv, and I was like, I guess I'll do the improv. Mm -hmm. But really had like a bad taste about the acting thing because my dad made money 
and and then and then spent that money and then we had no money and then we had money and then we had no money and I said why, why the fuck would anybody want to do that so ultimately I took that class and I remember I was the first person asked to get up and she said so what this is is you create a character and any character you want any character that comes to mind and from the house the students we're going to ask you questions and you answer as that character Mm -hmm. And and I had created some kind of middle-aged New Yorker, and I don't even know how I knew that at that point, like an <laughs> overweight, middle-aged, balding New Yorker. And <laughs> How old were you? I, I think I was, at that point, maybe four, 15, 14, 15. Okay. Okay. And then when I was answered, then there was laughter, right? And that was it. Like yeah. that was so, you love that. yeah. So it had nothing to do with what I was surrounded by. If anything, yeah. I was never going to be an actor. And it was that kind of drug induced, the mm -hmm. drug of the laughter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that or, or the, or the attention or the, or the, you can see that you're However good at you something. Like I wonder, yeah. I mean, cause well, I think for any kid, people. yeah, but any kid at right at that age, if you put something in front of them that they don't suck at and they get some sort of, you know, uh, charming sort of social status. I mean, I'm seeing it with my kids now, Willie. I'm sure you are too. You know, it's like right about this age, seven, anywhere between 12 and 17, like you're trying like, where do I fit in? What's my lane? What's my group? Mm. What am I good at? What should I never do again? Yeah. And for, for me, it was the same thing, Josh. It was this, sort of this, this acting like, well, that's where I got my attention. That's where yeah. guys thought I was cool and girls wanted to hang out with me. And it could have been anything else. I did this play. I did Twelfth Night, Shakespeare's Twelfth Night in high school. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand a word I was saying. <laughs> and, I, and until there was an audience, I, there's one line that says, I'll make one too. And that's the end of the scene. And they got a massive laugh. <laughs> 16, 17 years old. No idea why anybody laughed. And I was like, oh, that's who that character is. And that's why people are laughing. And then it clicked. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, Jason, what you just said. It's like, until you get that drug, you just don't know well, what yeah, it is. I, I was just thinking about like, how strange you do something and then people give you a lot of positive feedback and why would you want to do that? <laughs> right? like, of course. Yeah, you got to be feels, careful what you put in front of your kid good. at that age because that's what they're going to end up doing. But Josh, do you, when you when you did, um, like Amityville Horror was damaging to me. Like I saw that as a kid mm. and I was like, <laughs> it was like, it was one of the scariest things I've ever seen. You growing up on that set, did you... Could you then go back and watch the movie, having experienced seeing filming it, and get immersed into it, or did you see the how the sausage was but made? But not having it? grown up on the set, only having seen that. But scene. even that, even that. No, I, I had no interest, man. I, I, yeah. I'm telling you, I had no interest, and it wasn't until very irresponsibly, my dad took me to the theater, the Mission Theater, to see Apocalypse Now. Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which you, wow. you, I mean, that was one of those. That's one of those immersive things where you're like, "What the fuck are they doing?" How old yeah. were you when you saw that? I was eleven. Eleven. Yeah. That's enough I saw to absorb e. it. I Same was two thing. and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. You were Hollywood two and a half. <laughs> Fucking seeing that eleven. Like I, I don't think I saw. It, it well, what that about young. Jaws? I mean, Jaws was out in what seventy five. I was, saw Jaws I was in the theater. Six. I was yeah. six at seventy, and that's why. Or Rocky. Do you remember seeing Rocky? Oh yeah. yes. And like Rocky. the fact that like he doesn't win the fight, but yeah. it's a great big happy ending. I was just like, how do you pull that magic trick off? But but yeah, so Josh, so then what happens? And and you were like, first of all, I don't want to. It's kind of two questions. When you were up there, you were kind of. Uh, you surfed a lot. That played a big part in your life, right? You were a big time surfer. That took mm -hmm. a lot of your time. You had a whole gang of pals mm -hmm. uh, who you surfed with, uh, and then you kind of, and then you get Goonies. And, and wh what's that like? How did how did that come about? Because that was your first thing, really, right? Everything is super morbid. If I every story, I, uh, I, I yeah. thank God That's for okay. you guys Welcome being to able the party. to chat. Welcome to the party. By the way, morbid podcasts are like the best. They do the best yeah, on the charts. Right. So. Murder man. <laughs> we got Josh Brolin. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> um, yeah. What? So I grew up with these guys called that called themselves. We called ourselves. I'll include myself in that. The Cito Rats. And, and most of those guys, 37 out of probably 50 of us are, are dead now. And wow. that was the beginning of the punk rock era. That was an amazing time. It was an electric time. It was a fun time. But I got kicked out of my house at 16. And I went down to, I lived wow. on my dad's couch. Wait, what was and, the offense? 
I the fence is my mouth. You know, okay. I just yeah. got myself in a lot of <laughs> cost me a know, few schools. Yeah. Words. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, my my mom said it's time for you to leave, and I left, and 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 I stayed with my dad, who was living with his girlfriend in this apartment, and this was an attempt to kind of get my shit together. So. I made up a resume. I started doing martial arts, which one does when you try to get your shit together. Sure. sure. And I was yeah. fairly decent at that, and I started competing doing that. And at the same time, I made up. My dad said, why don't you, like, try and, like, work a little bit? Why don't you do theater? <laughs> why don't you do that? And I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. And I made up a resume. It was 100% made up, and I went from agent to agent trying to get an agent. And, you know, saying that I was at, like, I had done Streetcar at the Librero International Theater. <laughs> sure, there is no sure. Librero <laughs> International Theater. Sure, sure. And, and at the same time, I did see Streetcar and I saw um, East of Eden. And those yeah. two movies had a major impact. Anyway, somebody, Hillary Shore, took me on, uh, it, even though she knew the whole resume was bullshit. And she took me on, and I probably had back then. You know, when you would do auditions, you would go to three or four auditions in a day. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I think I did around three hundred and fifty auditions before I met Dick Donner and Steven Spielberg. Wow. I didn't really know who they were, but I that that was a six audition process before they really? said. Really, with nothing, the guy. nothing about but a fucking Thomas guide and a lot of hope, right? Bunch yeah. of headshots, yeah. It's an accident. Yeah. And I wasn't good. I can't say I was good. I said, and it, the same goes to today. You know, if you do Dune with a certain director, it's going to be a certain thing, somebody who understands yeah. what take to use, whatever. And then if you do Dune with Denis Villeneuve, it's going to, you know, yeah. the, the the foundation, the, the the you know, the worst it's going to be is still really good. Well, so so actually talk about that. And now we're going into Dune, Sean. And, but but I do want to say as, as a sort of entree to that, that's a really interesting point, uh, Josh, that you can go and do something. And, and part of the reason that people like you choose directors and choose projects are because you, you say, I want to be with that person because I believe that I'm in good hands. I believe that, A, that the script's good. I believe that their vision of it executing is good and that the way that they're from start to finish, from from casting to shooting to editing to all of that kind of stuff, that they're mm. going to do something that I believe, that I trust in, yeah. right? Like, because you're putting your trust in that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I also think, you know, just to kind of preface it, and then more up your alley, Sean, is that, you know, theater, I met a guy named Anthony Zerby, and Anthony Zerby was one of the great Shakespearean actors, maybe the lesser known. And and he had a, a, a poetry thing that he did, which I can't think of anything more boring. I don't know if you remember Cafe Lalo oh, back yeah. in the day on, like, Fairfax. And, you know, oh, yeah. And, like, yeah. Steve Baldwin would go and read his poetry. And it was all just <laughs> super dumb. <laughs> and and and, uh, and and I met a guy around that time named Anthony Zerby and Anthony Zerby and Roscoe Lee Brown, the great Roscoe Lee Brown, would do an hour and a half of poetry, and I saw it, and it fucking blew my mind. The fact that they had such a command over the language, and they understood pause, they understood cadence, they understood weight, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So I got together with Anthony, and I started doing theater in Rochester, New York, and I did five the seasons of theater oh, in wow. Rochester, New York. So wow. when you get that kind of vibe, what you were talking about back from the audience and you're, and you know, when a play is not very good and yet chemistry is really good with another actor and then that can kind of send the play in a different place and you see people crying and you see people laughing, you know, again, that's the addiction. You're like, oh, there's response here and there's, you know, there's, yeah. Kind I of, can move people. Yeah. Do, do you have a fa do you have a favorite of those plays back back when you I did, did a play that never went anywhere called Pits and Joe, and it was a guy with traumatic brainstem injury that had gotten into a motorcycle accident. It was based in truth. Wow. And this woman wrote it about her and her brother, and and I did one of those things where back when you wanted to be Daniel Day Lewis or whoever, you know. Yeah. And 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 I I went into the the care center that Joe was at, and I checked in. I I I, I met with the head of the care center. I met with like the five heads, the the psychology head, and all that. And I said, I really want to live in here as one of these people for a couple of weeks. Wow. Can you not tell anybody else that I'm actually not one? Of, I want to see if I can pull it off. <laughs> uh -huh. And I remember that wow. like after the second day, there was somebody I was trying. I was smoking or something or trying to smoke or put a cigarette in my mouth and a nurse came up to me and she said josh 
You can't, you're not a lot. And she was screaming in my ear and I wanted to say, shut the fuck up. Just like, <laughs> I'm acting, okay? I'm acting. <laughs> but she, she bought a ticket to the opening night, yeah. There was the, the, the head of the psychology that uh, there, um, he hated me and he yeah. hated what I was doing. And I yeah. was waiting by myself to have my, you know, two cigarettes of the day and he walked by me and it was just he and I, and he, he whispered, or he kind of like, you know, snarky said as he was walking by, he said, Joe would never do that. And I remember, <laughs> I remember I felt a rage uh -huh. and it was the rage that I felt. And then I, the connection between if Joe feels a rage, he would never be able to get up. So therefore I can't get up. Uh -huh. And that was what I needed to go play that. I oh, love that. Interesting. I love interesting. that. It's cool. Man. Now, have you stayed that that kind of a, a researching actor, or have you found that, you know, what what you've got, what you've absorbed in your life, gives you enough of a toolbox to apply to any character that you're attracted to nowadays? I, I think both, and I think what I'm going through right now. You know, I've been I've been very lucky to be offered a lot of really nice things recently, and I think the the hunger right now. Yeah. is to kind of go back to 2008 or, 2000, or or go back to that theater experience because I miss having to do or feeling like I have to do the research. Well, mm -hmm. i tell you something about the research. It reminded me, uh, Josh, of a story you told me years ago where you, um, when you did No Country for Old Men, which is just such a spectacular movie. One of my movie. favorites. Oh, my so, God. So, so good. And you're so, so good great. at it. And I remember we were talking, maybe it was when we were doing Jonah Hex, but you were saying... There's that scene early on where you're going to, and the motorcycle accident reminded me of this, where you got you got to shoot the guy and you take your boot off to to uh, level the gun. Is is that? Am I re remembering that correctly? Yeah, because I had gotten to it. Yeah, yeah, I got into a motorcycle. And you didn't accident. tell them. Tell these guys what, what, what happened. No, two days after I got, so I was doing this this small movie with Brittany Murphy, and I was having to go from I had gotten no country. And there was no way I was going to get No Country. I even read for No Country, and, and their only response, because I was doing a movie at the time, we sent in the video, and their only response was, who lit it? Oh. So they didn't even comment <laughs> on my act. They really just brothers. thought it was oh, really Jesus. well lit. Oh and then God. I got in there as the last reading, and, uh, and I got that part. You know, they asked me that afternoon, would you be interested in playing this part? And I was like, well, Jesus. hold on, let me, let, me, let me think about it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then I got into a motorcycle accident two days later, going oh, from God. one wardrobe fitting to the other, and I snapped my collarbone in half. God. And and I called them and I said, and I had prepped the doctor. I said, look, you know, Ethan wants to talk to the doctor to find out how bad it really is. And I told the doctor, you need to tell them it's a hairline fracture. I tried to become as intimidating as I could possibly <laughs> become. I was like, you're not going to be a doctor anymore if you don't say <laughs> these words in this way. Um, and it turned out that the only reason I was able to do the role was because Llewellyn gets shot in the right shoulder. Had mm. it been the chef left shoulder, I couldn't have done it. So he gets, so we're in the beginning of the movie, he puts the, he's supposed to be standing up and shooting at the antelope. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't lift up the, because literally it had only been two weeks since I snapped my collarbone and I was <sighs> letting it heal naturally. So I called somebody and, and there was somebody who knew a sniper in Vietnam and how could I hold the gun? I love that you called somebody who knew a sniper. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tend to know those people. Yeah. So yeah, so that's why the the boot is. I took my boot up and, and the Coen and, brothers seemed to seem to like that as sort of a character choice that you would use the boot, or was the boot off camera? No, you see it. No, the boot's on camera, and they liked that just because it it, it was it was viable. And he takes and, his fucking boot off, and, yeah. and then and then and then he, he he balances the gun on his fucking boot yeah. because he literally can't hold. Yeah, the gun. my hands. While, like, while we're yeah. there, before we get to 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 Sean's Dune Fiesta, um, <laughs> anything about the Coen brothers? Are just uh, you know like every other person in this industry they they are my north star and like uh, they can do Amazing. no wrong i just yeah. i can't yeah. uh, to work with them i'm just so like i'll take anything you can give me about what that experience is like it's so you know it's funny because i've tried to make it you know in the past and you're on talk shows and you're like tell me about the coins like yeah. tell me a yeah. funny story yeah. And there's not, they're so fucking normal. Right, yeah. The greatest thing that I, you know, I've done three three movies in a short with the Coens. Yeah, and, yeah. 
And, and the greatest thing I ever got from them was after every scene I've ever done, especially in the beginning, with the exception of one story that I'll tell you, I've never, ever gotten a great scene. Right. I've never wow. gotten a thumbs like, up. Great job. Right. Really? It's just the moving on is the It's is literally the moving yeah. on and looking up and seeing their backs walking away to the next set. No way. Right? Oh, wow. So it, 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 at best, it's like, hey, what'd you think? Like maybe later on I'd go, you know, what'd you think of that scene? And they go, meh. Yeah. Like basically it's yeah. got, it's we got what we need. Right. And you did your job correctly, <laughs> which wow. is why we hired my, you. That was my dad's reaction growing up. Uh, that was your dad. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. No, there's a trauma. Oh, shit. In that. He didn't have it. How would you? How would you know what his reaction was? <laughs> yeah, right. would unless you, you know? could read his mind through the rearview mirror. Yeah. You know, what, you can read people's minds from fifty miles away. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Woody Harrelson was the only guy who couldn't remember his lines during No Country, and we had that scene in the hospital together, and he talks the majority of the time. Yeah. And he couldn't get through his fucking lines. And then when finally he did one take where he kind of stumbled through his lines, and then I saw the Coens come from behind set, and they looked up and they go, wow, that was amazing. And I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> this dude's literally stuttering through his shit. You're holding his cue cards, like it's right? Nothing. Yeah. That's, nothing. That's, that's they, were just, they, were, they were just happy they got a take, let's be honest. So from old <laughs> yeah. wood. Wait, uh, so Dune, so oh, here we go. first of all, okay, here we go. Okay, so wait, so arrive. So, okay, so, 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 is okay. the sand real? Let's just start. <laughs> so, okay, so, I'm so okay. bored. Can I talk okay. about Dune? Do you get really sand so, in your eyes? Can I talk about Dune? No, so, by the way, is it real? Is it, is it a real place? Is it a real place? Yes. No, it, but it's it's one of No Country for Old Men is one of my favorite movies too, but Dune. I can't get. First of all, Arrival is one of my favorite movies as yeah, well. Yeah, me too. Cool, me too. So clever and well made, and the script is amazing. The, the direction, everything. Tell him, tell him why it's why, why it's connect. Tell Tracy why that's connected, John. Oh, because he directed the same director directed Arrival as Denny Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. And so uh, so Dune. I Who also same... directed Sicario, by the way. Yeah, oh, and you were also God. great in that. Yeah. Maybe dude, a top three. Dude, I want to get in. I want to. Well, after Dune, I want to get in Sicario. Okay. I so wait. So so love so do, I want to know. Just like Jason said, was like the Ethan's. What's it like on that set? Where are, I mean, are they sets? Are you really in the desert? Like, how much of it is real? How much of it isn't? Jesus most of it, Christ. most of it is practical. Really most desert. of it is. Well, let's just, just we just pause the interview. Well, because right it here. looks like it's in really in the desert. <laughs> It, it does, like really doesn't desert. it? It's because go they've what, got what, the What part funds gave you that impression? Was it the desert? Yeah. <laughs> would they be spending less money if they just green screened the whole goddamn thing? Or would that maybe be a little bit more? <laughs> it's actually really sweet because he's like oh, bless him. full fanboy right I, now. I'm a oh. massive, yeah. massive like, fan. Ask him to stand up. Yeah. You can see his pants are And you're are so off. good at <laughs> it. <laughs> And then have him pan his camera right, and you'll see Scotty just in full pull mode. <laughs> Go ahead. Next question, Sean. Yes. Sean. Go ahead and finish Scotty off with the next one. Hilarious. Wait, so isn't it, by the way, isn't it wild that you guys had to hold the release because of the strike? Speaking of holding so the release. now it's in March, is that what it is? Uh -huh. Yeah, was that why? Yeah. And then, we, and then we went back for reshoots in the first one during the pandemic, which we hadn't. We, oh we did it before the, the pandemic. What is it? Tell me what it's like working with him. And, and is it is it as is it the opposite of the Ethans of the Coens? I mean, well, he's also Ethan. Canadian, is he not, Denny? He is. Can he's French Canadian, right? He's so amazing. he's incredibly kind and probably effusive Thank with you. his compliments. Well, Thank and, you. Right? He's coming up giving you a little high five at the end of a good Thank take. So he is actually yeah. a little. Yeah, but what I was going to say about the Coens thing is that taught me a great thing, and I don't really look for that anymore. I don't. Yeah, mm. but I mean, what what the, what he's accomplished in you too in Dune is like. It's hard to get the tone and the feel and the actors and the script and the sets and just everything works perfectly. It yeah. creates a world that we haven't seen. It's very collaborative, you know, and, and if I can go back to Sicario for a second, yeah, you know, please. I had turned down because he wasn't really an established huh? yeah. director at that point. He had done Asandi. He had done one American film with Hugh Jackman. What was that film called? Pa uh, uh, not Passengers, uh, not Visitors. You know what I'm talking um, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, about and, the kidnapping, and Jake right? Gyllenhaal, yeah. which was actually really good, but I said, I don't know why, because I think it was a really small part. Anyway, to get through Wait, this, had, like, was Bob Elswit on board yet? I mean, uh, I think that wasn't you mean DP? Deacons? 
Oh, was it Deacons that did it? It was yeah. Deacons. Deacons. And I had Fuck. worked with Deacons a couple of times. And 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 it was also Benicio and it was yeah. Emily Blunt. And right. anyway, I said no. I said no twice. And I don't know wow. why. But mm. but and 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 he called me and he said what every director says and lies about, which is we're gonna expand this role. Ah, right. Like right. what it is right now is not really what it's gonna right. be. And you're like, well, right. you're full of shit, because I've heard that from everybody. But the truth is and whether it was just kind of happened this way because of fate or whatever, you know, it was it, it it was so expanded and it was so once we got on set, it was like such a vibe that that all came from him, yeah. which was this isn't working. So let's work on this or I'm going to knock on your trailer door. Benicio doesn't want to talk anymore. He thinks you should talk because you like to talk. And I'm like, I'm a different fucking character, but we need this <laughs> exposition. How can we make it behavioral? Yeah. Uh -huh. So on and so forth. So it became a very very, very collaborative process. So that's what I get doing. You know, Denis is my good, good friend now, but he's a guy who I would work on anything with because yeah. that kind of collaborative effort to me is, is the top. But, but Sean, but Sean points out like Sicario, you know, is about a world that, that exists, right? Like this, it's a reflection of this real world, may, maybe height, maybe not. I don't really know, but like of this thing, do things like Dune, as Sean pointed out, the, it's world building, right? It's creating yeah. a world. It's creating a whole That's thing. so hard to get right. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, but there was a guy, Zev Boro, who I know from New York, and he's my good buddy, and he and he read through that whole series three times when he was a kid, so he knows yeah. it as yeah. well as anybody, as well as Denis does, you know? And when he saw the movie, I kind of snuck him in in Santa Fe when I saw the first one, and there was a pause after the movie ended, and this guy's a 48-year-old guy, and he stood up and he started screaming, Yes! That's it! Yes! <laughs> Fuck yes! That's great. What, what do they call great. him? What are they, his nickname is Zev the Virgin, right? I mean, he read through all three. Right. And he's 40. <laughs> Zev the Virgin. Wait, uh, now, now that you're cool. Now that you've had all the success and you've been working for so many years, and you told us the story about how you know your dad had money, then didn't have money, had money, then didn't have money. And so it kind of left you in a weird place probably growing up. How are you with with money now and handling it? Are you are you more responsible and you would try to teach your kids about the responsibility of money? Yeah, it's a it's an ongoing subject about where we live and what that promotes and mm -hmm. what that, you know, given that I grew up on a ranch, given that we have a ranch that's three miles away from the ranch I grew up on, mm. that I take my wow. kids there a lot. I take my kids right now. They haven't been to the set very much, but I take them wherever we shoot. You know, I have a 30-year-old, a 35-year-old, a 3-year-old, and a 5-year-old. That's oh, crazy wow. guy. Wow. So now what what kind of what kind of grandfather skills does uh, does he have? What kind of grandma skills does Babs have? I mean like, what 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 are these what are these family uh, get togethers like? You know, there's there's a real what for lack of a better word hard on for my for my for, for my kids, my young kids with mm -hmm. with said uh, grandparents. Yeah. Okay. And really quick, just for my sister, and I'm just saying this for my sister, Josh. Yeah. She does. No, you're not. Your no, dad is James Brolin, who's married to Barbara Streisand. No Correct. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you this also call made him. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> That's it. Uh, go dad. <laughs> it's for my sister yeah. and for my sister, Tracy. Um, but they're, uh, they're 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 keyed in on these on these two. Was it different than the uh, than the first two kids? Like they got I think another so. crack I, at I it. I think in my my first two kids definitely. You know they laugh at it now, where they were like, you know, we're still here, by the way. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But the young kids are very <laughs> cute, and I think that they're at an age now where things have slowed down enough where you start to appreciate those familially, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. What what would you say is the biggest difference between your fathering on the first two versus the 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 second two? Um, what what, what have you have? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've got a little little lighter blend on the on your um, on your hydration this round. I mean, that's just the fucking truth, man. I mean, I was in and out and that kind of thing. But, you know, I mean, that, and I think it's okay to say this, even though it's an, an anonymous program. My son's sober. My daughter's married to a sober dude. That's mm -hmm. great. My wife's yeah. sober. I I'm love sober. that. I love that. Right. So they, well, they, so they learned a lot from your, your, your mistakes or your. your Hopefully. Yeah. In all honesty. Awesome. 
You know what I mean? I think we were all pretty open. I tried not to let the thing cross over, and it did cross over a few times, and yeah. we talk about it, but it's a very open open dialogue with us. You know? When you mentioned about you getting kicked out at 16 years old because of your mouth and stuff, do you, rec- do you recognize the signs in any of your kids that they they kind of re- are, might repeat the same behavior that you did when you... No, because I think mine was so extreme that... Yeah that it was it was definitely a warning light yeah as opposed to let me try and emulate that to see if i can pull that off uh-huh, right you right. know what you know what's funny josh is the other the other day i was reading this story um in the wall street journal these guys don't know what that is but there was a there was a story <laughs> there was a story about about uh, weed <laughs> Uh, there was a story about weed, and it was saying how they, they've seen an uptick in, uh, you know, p- kids having psychotic breaks as a result of mm, cannabis yes. as compared to 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, so strong. I send it to my ex. I, I text it to Amy, like, immediately. And she goes, why are you sending me this? And our, <laughs> our older sons are 13 and 15. And I go, because it, weed is very readily available, and there are things around, and blah, 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 yeah. and I'm very nervous about it. <laughs> like, yeah, I just yeah. had this, like, you know what I mean? Because it wasn't But I like understand. When, it was like, remember back in the 70s? I remember I... I I, I, I it was a friend of my dad's in Pass Robles, and, and I, some, I like was on the floor or something, and I looked under his bed, and I found a drawer of pot, and I rolled oh, it nice. up in some writing paper and tried to smoke it when I got home when I was like eight or nine. <laughs> but even if I was able to smoke it, you would have been the fine. high would have been. You uh, wouldn't have been that high, right? You yeah. smoke a full joint nowadays, you got to call oh, dude, your mom. One hit yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Oh no 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 yeah yeah yeah. Before what? I got sober, I remember I I loved the idea of dispensaries and. I I love the yeah. idea be- sure. behind the, the, the science in, in it all. And I was yeah. like, well, what does this do? And where is this? And how do you make this? I'm in it for that. the science, too. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I get it. Uh, but there was a guy, he was from Poland, and we kind of would go through this whole thing, and I would pretend like, like I didn't smoke because I didn't really love smoking very much. And then I would give it to my friends. But then one night... I was home alone, and I was supposed to read this this uh, essay that my daughter had done. Uh-oh. And I went outside, and I was like, well, maybe I'll try it. I'll just try a little bit. And I took a little hit, and I, I, I got too much smoke. And then I <laughs> coughed it out. And by the time I had exhaled, I was convinced that there were crosshairs from across the building on my head. And I was slowly lowering behind my... You know, Army I mean? crawl back into the house. Yeah, and then I tried to read the essay, and I read... The same first line about 125 <laughs> times, uh, and that was one hit, man. Right. Uh, so I get it. He needed to get into the edibles. It's heavy duty, Sean. <laughs> Whatever, Sean. I love it when <laughs> Sean get gets. I love it. Well, Jason, Jason could, is his book is coming about out, and it's about edibles. But he oh, hasn't good. read the first. He's written the first line 120 times. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> when Sean gets on weed, it is That's my favorite. When you take yeah. gets on weed, who's old? Yeah. When, yeah. But when Sean uh, smokes weed or takes an edible, it's the funniest. I, it makes me laugh, Sean. Yeah. Anytime. I, I, well, I get like as he's getting vision. to the hospital, and yeah. I, I get spurts of little energy. But wait. Like, when I was a kid, I was so afraid of doing anything wrong. Like, I was, I remember I was scared about um, having a library book out too long. And I thought mm. I was going to get in massive trouble. Where yeah, does it come, that. where does that come from where you're like, <laughs> yeah, I'll try this. I'll do this. I'll get into this trouble. I'll beat the shit out of this kid. I'll smoke this stuff. Like, where I does never that... beat the shit out of a kid. I was never that guy. You know, yeah. I bullies maybe, but I was never, even though we all fought a lot. But it was that was the that was the culture. That was the culture that I grew up in in punk rock and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Back oh, when wow, parents okay. were doing blow instead of parenting. And... Imagine what a bummer it would be to get into a fight with Brolin. It would fucking suck. At any age. At I'll, any bet, age. I'll bet at eight he could uh, really square you up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I went over there. I went over to Berlin. Remember, I came over to try your cold plunge like five years ago, and we get in the yeah. fucking cold plunge, and he's a couple years older than me. I was like, look how fucking stacked this motherfucker is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a, how old like are you, such Josh? A baby. See here, 55. he's just cut to ribbons. Are you in better shape now than you've ever been in your life? I'll bet no, you are. I was, I was in better shape during Dune than I've been in in a very, very long time. I think yeah, when, I did, when I did uh, Deadpool 2, I think that's the you best shape I've Deadpool ever been too, in. You look great Sean, cool it. Did you, I'm just did, saying, you, but you, did you still do the martial arts and, and have you ever and or would you and can I promote you and Downey fighting each other? I would do that. I was just with Danny, and we were talking about you two days ago. I'm going to fucking love to set that up. Wait, can I get in on that, Arnett? Yeah, I'm getting it ready down. (laughs) Downey Brolin fight. Well, let's do it in... uh, 
Do we think Vegas, Atlantic City, or what about Laughlin? <laughs> Laughlin would be kind of kitschy, right? Yeah, or Reno. Remember, remember that? Wasn't there like an animated thing, like celebrity fights or something like that? Yeah, was there really? It was like a claymation thing. Yeah, look it up afterwards. It was super fun. I'd like to make that a reality. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to oh, that's right. There was a claymation else. show, yeah. I'm bored with the acting. I want to fuck celebrities up. <laughs> <laughs> There's our clip. <laughs> I would fucking... I am backing you, bro, and you're my fucking dog in this time. Wait. Josh, do you do you oh. know Brendan Shanahan? He's a friend mm -hmm. of Will's. He's a hockey no. player. He's hockey a hockey player. Retired player. hockey player, president of the Toronto Maple Leafs, one of the all-time great guys. So Will and sure. Brendan and I were out to dinner this is a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I said to Brendan Shanahan, who's been in you know a thousand fights on the on the ice rink, he holds the record for the most what they call Gordy Howe <laughs> hat tricks, which is goal assist and fight in a game. Right. <laughs> really? So I yeah, told amazing. him, I, yeah. I always had this a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a fantasy of getting in a fight because I've never been in a fist fight, right? Mm. Mostly on and the receiving end, right? Just getting beat to shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, no, in so, hockey fights where you just grab somebody. What if you pull my hair right before going. you? Yeah, 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 like that. You know, that's, that's it's, what it's, it's, By the way, it's is. borderline fetish, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just because I, I don't know. I, 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 part of me just wants to know what that feels like. And so <laughs> Brendan, Brendan takes me happen. out. Yeah. So Brendan Sean, takes me out and grabs me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's teaching me how to fight. And in two, and I can't stop smiling because I think it's so funny. <laughs> and he goes, first of all, wipe that fucking smile off your face if you're going to get into a fight. <laughs> yeah. And how'd you feel? How'd you feel when he said that? You got scared. I was like, it made me laugh harder. Yeah, he's yeah. like, stop so, looking like you're going to enjoy this, god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he grabs me in some crazy hold in two seconds flat. I can't move my entire body. Oh, yeah. And he's like, this is, you would be dead. So you had just beat the shit out of your face. He had his arm wrapped around me. So, and then I would just start filling you in like this. And he just starts going like this. Sean's <laughs> laughing. And he did say, by the way, it's at the back entrance, that little back side door behind the polo lounge. There's nothing more elitist than, right. <laughs> elitist than that, <laughs> than that <laughs> scenario. Um, <laughs> what about, what about uh, 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 MMA kind of stuff? Are you training with that too? Like, could you, is that, is that your skill set or is it more uh, martial arts? I think it, it was martial arts no longer, even though I know that, like the Gracies have become good friends and, oh, and wow. through Laird Hamilton and all that. And, and I have massive respect for them. But no, I think the, the, the getting in shape, MMA, you know, Dana White's a really close friend of mine. I love MMA. I've always loved boxing. I didn't think MMA would last or UFC would last. And it it's has. Incredible. And yeah. it's incredible. And I'm, I get very into it. Have a lot of guys come over to my house. We just built this extra kind of, MMA barn. What time? You can watch MMA on what? What time? <laughs> what time? What time? I'll invite you. <laughs> you know. You know what's funny, Josh, is uh, all this stuff, and you do a lot of this uh, this stuff, and you're very in shape and whatever. But you know, over the last couple of years, I have noticed, and I think you 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 mentioned going to you know listen to poetry years ago. But anybody who follows you on Instagram or anybody who uh, who gets texts from you. Uh, you know, talking about your day or the things that you're grateful for, i.e. gratitude list, no. knows that you, you've you kind of like veered into that. As, as much of a guy, you like to sort of mix it up. You've also become quite, and maybe this is just a result of, of older age and having ki younger kids again, you've become quite ponderous. You've become quite, uh, uh, you really appreciating the world around you in a way that's that's pretty astounding. I know, I'm going to make out with you now too. <laughs> He's got but that soft, true. chewy center. But it, it's yeah. true, man. You, you, yeah. you do. Like every day you talk about, and you talk about things you're really open about, appreciating your wife, loving your wife, loving your kids. You're really I open about it. And I think there's something super, super, super nice and vulnerable and beautiful about that. Thanks. Yeah. I, I yeah. appreciate that very much. I don't think it's a new thing, but I think it's ramped up recently because I yeah. love the idea of contrast mm -hmm. and yeah. the fact that I'm, you know, that I ride a vintage motorcycle or with a group of dudes or the fact that, you know, I, I'm perceived as this scrappy, gnarly, whatever, <laughs> Ultraman, right. the yeah. last man in Hollywood. Uh -huh. yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then, what is it should the be counter? noted? It should be noted that Josh is smiling when he says that. Yeah, yeah. I am yeah. smiling. Um, that you know, I I love the idea of contrasting that with with because I, I there is an incredible sensitivity, and I do love my kids. I will be raising. I had my first kid when I was twenty, and my mm. and my youngest. 
I'll be 70 when she graduates high school, you know? Oh, wow. and, so and, cool. and, and I love it, man. I love it in the writing. What would, what, what would be the contrasting thing that would, that would surprise most people? Like what, what is the softest thing that you do? On okay. A here's a, here's, basis? here's a story. Here's a story. And I don't know if this is the best story to tell, but the story, when we went to Atlanta and we, and we, during the pandemic, we kind of moved to Atlanta where my wife is from and, 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 you know, nothing against Atlanta, but when I got to Atlanta, I realized I was in Atlanta. I didn't realize Atlanta was in Atlanta, so I couldn't stay, <laughs> but I, I was sitting there and it's such a nice house and, and I'm looking out the window and I see this kind of barrel chested, tattooed, huge goateed tattoo, you know, guy. Uh, in the middle of my yard and he's kind of looking up at a tree uh -oh. and and I go who the fuck is that and I open the door and I go hey man and he <laughs> looks at me and he goes hey and I go yeah what the fuck are you doing in my yard and he, go, <laughs> and he looks at me and there's a long pause and he goes I'm your gardener and I go oh <laughs> fuck I'm so sorry and I went down there and I started talking to him <laughs> and within 15 minutes, and I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating, within 15 minutes, he and I are in a total embrace, tears falling down our oh, cheeks. Wow. And mm. it turns out that he's 24 years sober. Wow. He runs the biggest sober biker club that's an international biker club in the world. That's amazing. He's one of my best friends now. I love and that. So I love the idea of this cosmetic thing that you immediately yeah. judge and then underneath it is whatever. We I love that. Well, be. the biggest compliment I can give you is I've never met you before. This is the first time. And, no. I feel, and you're completely, I feel completely at ease with you. I feel like I've known you forever. You seem so open and just normal down to earth and honest. And please put me in a chokehold. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> and can you please put me in a chokehold? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, maybe the best time joke of all time. <laughs> and I want a spoon with you. You seem like the guy that'd be are really you, cool Are you in New York, with. by the way? Are you in, Sean, are you in New York? I'm in Los Angeles. You're in Los Angeles. Yeah. My wife saw your play. I did not, admittedly, oh, so but my good. wife saw your play, uh, which I heard well, please was... please tell her thank you. You were truly a revelation. Oh, it that's was, very nice. It was... Honestly, it was so. Fr no, okay. I know, Sean. Fuck off. We, fuck off. It was so good. It, it, it nice. deserves get mentioned whenever. Whenever we talk about it, it was so so it's very nice. good. Oh, That's speaking of Josh, you got any horrible, tragic theater stories? Something that just went horribly wrong? You know, no, man. But just theater. Theater is such a. It's a funny thing. You know, it's like the, my experience of theater is like you fucking people in Hollywood. You right. know, <laughs> you're yeah. such phonies, you're such fakes, right. you don't understand the real thing. Right. And right. then that person, three days later, you'll see in, in like an El Pollo Loco commercial. <laughs> oh, right, exactly. Or, suit. or like, I'm coming out in March for pilot season, you got an extra bag? Yeah, literally. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I find it the most hypocritical society <laughs> I've ever... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love it. And I just wrote a play and I'm, we're trying to get that play done in Ojai and oh, great. it's really good. But I'm reminded again and again how much I hate the theater community. <laughs> I'm um, just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> He's totally kidding. One of yeah. my favorite uh, questions, um, and we'll let you go, uh, is mm. with all of the incredible set experience that you have and all the incredible directors you've worked with, have you ever been tempted to take all of that which you've cherry picked from them and 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 sit in the chair yourself and and direct something? You know, it's funny you would bring this up, and I'm curious why you would bring it up because I was going to bring it up regardless of whether you brought it up or not. But I reached out to you uh -oh. when I directed an episode of Outer Range, which is something that I did with uh, with Amazon. Yeah, a very strange kind of Western, contemporary Western, and. You know, it, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've directed theater. I've n never directed. I directed a short, but I've ne never directed something that was substantial and with money. And and I reached out to you and I said... you were what? just thinking about it at the time, weren't you? I was thinking about it yeah. at the time. And I reached out to you and I said, you know, do you have any advice for me? And which I thought was really interesting. Like, why why would I reach out to you? So obviously, my respect like, for you. Who do you think you've called? No, but I <laughs> I love that I reached out to you, and you said a great thing. You were like, don't you, you know, focus on the day players, 
You said, yeah. don't forget about the day players. That was one one bit of advice that you gave me. But you were so sweet and so kind of you. you kind and Tracy, of the, the 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 day players are the are the actors that are doing the parts that are not the starring roles. They're the, maybe they're one the, line, three you know, lines. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're cast right from the, the local city that you're shooting in. And you know, there's a there's a there's a there's an instinct sometimes for them to potentially overplay their scene because they're only in a couple of scenes, and sometimes as a director, which can you know, take you right out of a scene, uh, right? Yeah, and so as a director, which was your point, I think, right? So di how did that go? Really, really well. And I have to say that directing, and I know a lot of probably actors feel like this. It wasn't an opportunity to finally do the thing that I wanted to do that no director would let me do, yeah. but it was more that. The myriad interests that I've had in my lifetime that I never really understood all made sense suddenly. Yeah. It was like I can utilize everything I've ever been interested in and everything that I've wanted to randomly learn and didn't know why yeah. now makes perfect sense. Yeah. When you're available to somebody in the way that they need you to be available, which changes from actor to actor and, and, and you know, um, staff members, staff, whatever, you yeah. know, DP or whatever, and say, how can I be most helpful as opposed to how can I make my mark and util you know, use right. my power because now I finally have it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. exactly. You know? Are you thinking about doing it again, perhaps? I think that's the, the, I think out of that has come a real interest in, in, in finding foreign directors right now and finding projects like that and really focusing on, on, on I, a, a, another echelon of great directors, and yes. Yeah. Should, I would yeah, like right. to think that I would further that. I think it would be dumb not to. I think the only reason why it wouldn't happen is out of fear, and I'm kind of, at 55, I'm kind of done with the idea of fear. Yeah. But I was going to say, you know, the thing that Jason says to pe a lot of people, and he talks about experience on set, you, and, and you've been doing it a long time, you, have, you do have so much experience, and you do have such a point of view, yeah. and that's important as a director, Obviously, as you all, as we all know, and I'm surprised that it's not something that you're like actively doing more because you do have such a strong point of view and know how and incredible and, yeah. experience and, and so comfort on a set and, to, in order yeah. to lead, you know. But I think I think it's also the fact, and I think this has to do with raising kids, is you're not afraid to be wrong because yeah. you understand that wrong doesn't really pertain. You just have to make a decision, right. and you have to allow other people to be able to lean on you. Mm -hmm. and stand behind your decisions and know that it's not going to be perfect and know that yeah. you're going to have to compensate and know that you may have to fix some things in editing and all that kind of stuff. I just think it's another, it's kind of like photography. It's one of those things that you know you'll never master and I love the idea of having to pursue something that you'll never master. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I you love that. I mean? That's Amen. cool. Uh, dude, we could fucking talk to you forever, I honestly. Yeah, I love I you guys. I've loved this love time. Love you, dude. Yeah. 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 Thank so, you for so saying good. yes and doing this with yeah. us. Yeah, thank yeah. you. It's been a long time coming. Thank you for having me. Really I'm a massive it. fan. Thank yeah, you, Sean. You're one of the really all time. You're one of the all timers, JB. Fucking love you. Miss you, dude. Yep. Miss you guys too. Thank you very much for this time. Honestly. Thank you, pal. It was it was nutritious. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great rest of the Thanks, day, Thanks, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. See you, Josh. Bye. 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 That is that's a JB. That's a real JB. That's a capital J, capital B. Yeah, if somebody yeah. says, hey, show me the best JB you got, I'm right. wheeling him out. Sure, yeah. sure. And then, like, they'll say, well, second, third, fourth, what else? Well, just, we're going to go lowercase. Yeah, we're going to go lowercase, like a more like more of a beta JB. Yeah, it's like, I, hey, guys. Hey, there you are. <laughs> what if somebody said, show me a great BJ? Um, and you'd say, how much time you got? I would say, I would say, Sean, let me look at your browser history. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that Josh Brolin. He's a yeah. sweet guy. He's a normal guy. God, I could talk Sean, to him forever. I'm, I'm surprised you've never met him before. I never met him before. I'm a huge fan. That's a good dude. Wouldn't you love to be stuck on set with him for a few months? Oh God, yeah, super fun. Yeah, I had the pleasure uh, back in the day, day when he it was a different uh, different time, but it was still super fun hanging with him. And he's yeah, just, he's one of those guys that's just electric. He, just he is electric. He's really funny and uh, he's really smart and uh, he's interesting and all that stuff. He's well read. Like he's just like one of those. But, uh, Bateman, you you kind of you've kind of known him, right, on and off for years. Uh, yeah, a little bit. We we shared an agent for a little while, and oh um, right, yeah. But um, I, I think you you know him a, a lot better. I, I wish I I wish I knew him um, a lot better. I I, I can hang. We have a lot guy. of friends in common, if you know what I mean. And uh, he's just mm -hmm. a fucking 
He is says, he back here in L.A. now full time? Yeah. They, he was here and then they moved to, like he said, they moved to Atlanta for a bit and then they came back. And um, oh, By the way, everybody in Atlanta, I love Atlanta. All right, I, Me too. Atlanta. It's it's all yeah. it'll it'll surprise he you. He does too. He 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 was being he was he was playing it up. He does too. And his wife is is from Atlanta, her whole family, and and his uh, his sister in law and brother in law, who's a good friend of mine, Jackson, who we didn't talk about, uh, is a really good buddy of mine who lives in Atlanta. Atlanta is a great great town. You and I both had awesome experiences in that town. Yeah, um, I shot a movie there. It was super hot, but it was wonderful. The people are awesome. It's a great town, uh, et cetera. But that old uh, yeah, that JB is. Um, I like just, what he said too when he was like he was talking about how he likes to what does he say like contrast? Yeah, contrast, contrast, almost like bifurcate, right? Oh. Like what he's um what he's How did you Why didn't you not did use you the bi on bifurcate? You just right had, there. Oh, you had uh, it. how how he go likes back. to go We're back. Still rolling. Go back. We're still rolling. Okay, he back. likes just to let everybody like the, reset. You like the way he likes to what? Bifurcate. Bye. Oh, Sean, great one. I can't yourself. believe you blew it. Smart. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry, and Rob Armjarf. Smart. Less.